The last time Xi Jinping met Vladimir Putin, it was just before the Ukraine war. The two 69-year-old leaders sealed a no-limits partnership. A lot has changed since then, but not much seems to have changed as far as their partnership is concerned. Today, the two leaders met again on the sidelines of the SCO summit, discussing both Ukraine and Taiwan. The Russian leader thanked the Chinese leader for his balanced position on Ukraine, but also understood Beijing's questions and concern over the conflict. Vladimir Putin explicitly backed China over Taiwan, saying that Moscow firmly adheres to the one China policy. Instead, he condemned U.S. provocations in the Taiwan Strait. Attempts to create a unipolar world have recently acquired an absolutely ugly form and are completely unacceptable. Meanwhile, Xi Jinping told Vladimir Putin that Beijing was willing to work with Moscow as great powers, quote-unquote. Listen in. Facing an ever-changing world, era and history, China is willing to make efforts with Russia to assume the role of great powers and play a guiding role to inject stability and positive energy into a world rocked by social turmoil. For Putin, China's big power support is crucial. Moscow is currently isolated by the West after the Ukraine war, and this allows Russia to cement its tilt towards Asia. But there is a limit to the partnership. China has been careful about its position on the Russia-Ukraine war. It neither supports it nor, con nor contends it. In fact, China's parliament chief has said that Russia's actions are a legitimate response to America's provocation. Currently, Russia and China enjoy the best relations the two countries have seen since the 1950s. The two countries share a long border. And that brings us to what is sustaining this friendship. Number one is energy. Selling oil and gas to Europe is the main source of Russian foreign currency earnings. And now Putin is selling more to China, the world's largest energy consumer. China is Russia's largest buyer of oil. In fact, Beijing imported 17% more Russian crude between April and July than it did in the same period a year ago. Currently, power of Siberia 1 is the only major Russian gas pipeline to China. It is expected to, expected to deliver 16 billion cubic meters in 2022. Now, Gazprom is studying the possibility of a major new gas pipeline called the Power of Siberia 2, one that will travel through Mongolia, taking Russian gas to China. So the energy relationship is secured, but what about trade? For Russia, China is its top trading partner. In 2021, the trade turnover between the two reached $140 billion. In 2022, so far, trade has been equal to $93 billion. Data showing a 30% rise in trade so far this year. The yuan, too, is becoming popular, more popular in Russia, especially as Moscow tries to ditch its addiction to cash U.S. dollars. In fact, Russia's government is considering a new proposal. Moscow could buy three to four billion dollars worth of Chinese yuan a month, and this could help stem the ruble's rise. Last week, Putin said that China will be paying Gazprom for its gas in national currencies. The leaders even share a great personal rapport. Since 2013, the two have met over 30 times. Xi Jinping even called Putin his best friend. They have unveiled pandas together. They have cooked together, not once, but twice. In 2018, Putin made dumplings with Xi Jinping, and when she came to Russia, they made pancakes together. They call each other their best friends, partners in an alliance to counter the West. Economic ties are the foundation of this relationship, but it looks like Russia and China are moving closer to each other every day. For now, the two leaders are putting up a united front. But how exactly will this equation evolve 
only time can tell. And taking you straight to the heart of action, live from Samarkand in Uzbekistan, our correspondents who have been tracking those developments very closely, Anas Malik and Siddhant Sibyl on the broadcast with me right here. Uh, Siddhant, coming to you first on the key takeaways from that meeting, the optics, the body language, a lot of observations have been made. Uh, tell us more about what you picked up right there. Well, amidst the Ukraine conflict, the West is keen on sanctioning President Putin. And for President Putin, Samarkand SCO summit is an occasion to engage with Eurasian and Asian leaders. A meeting with the Chinese President Xi Jinping is a shot in the arm and a reaffirmation of close ties between Moscow and Beijing. We know that President Putin is having a number of bilaterals today and tomorrow, of course, he meets the Indian Prime Minister as well. But this is a meeting that everyone was closely watching. Uh, President President Putin made all the right noises. He said he reaffirmed one China policy. He condemned uh, the actions by U.S. when it comes to the Taiwan Strait crisis. Something that is music to the ears of uh, President of uh, China Xi Jinping, who of course is on his first abroad visit since 2020. Since uh, of course the COVID pandemic uh, started, his last visit was to Myanmar in January of 2020. But by and large, today's meeting will go a long way in reaffirmation of the close brotherhood we are looking at. We have seen partnership between. Between, uh, both the countries in every sector possible, civilian, military. But one might say there is some hitch because the last time they were in Beijing, the comments which were used by both the leaders and commentary which was coming was no limit partnership. That was missing this time, at least in the opening statements. Right. Let me also bring in uh, Anas Malik, who has been tracking those developments as well. Uh, Anas, it's been a, a very eventful day and an eventful few hours for the Pakistani leader uh, as well. Uh, tell us more about, about the expectations, about the key, uh, key takeaways on that front. Well, the expectations, Molly, you've rightly said that it has been an eventful day and the expectations have been quite low on the part of Pakistan because the bar uh, has been that to engage. Uh, remember, this visit comes in the backdrop of those allegations by former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan that uh, no government would want to interact or engage with this uh, incumbent government in Pakistan, uh, saying that it, because of what he says is that this is a foreign imported regime. Uh, but that impression has been negated by today's engagements. It's been roughly about seven to eight hours since uh, Shehbaz Sharif has landed uh, here in uh, Samarkand and uh, in these eight hours he's had six bilaterals as you speak. He's had that informal dinner. He's had that key meeting with President Putin where uh, bilateral matters, trade and the situation in Afghanistan were discussed. So definitely a shot in the arm for his government as well. Uh, uh, something to harp on, something to uh, something to say or claim, uh, proudly claim back home that they had a meeting tomorrow. He's scheduled to meet uh, the Chinese president, President Xi in the morning. Uh, that meeting will be a first between the two because remember since uh, the past five months since Shabazz Sharif has taken charge there hasn't been a, been a formal communication uh, a phone call between President Xi and President uh, Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif. Therefore this meet meeting that is to happen tomorrow between President Xi, the Chinese President and the Pakistani Prime Minister will also be very very closely watched out. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.